Hello everybody. I wasn't really planning on doing a video about rules for a while, but then this happened. <laughs> so it, it made absolute sense to give it a crack, I suppose. Um, if it's boring, I apologise, but I couldn't help myself. <laughs> uh, this is all about, uh, I suppose it's a flip through slash first impressions type chat about this set of rules, which has just been published. It's called Never Mind the Bill Hooks. <laughs> I'll leave you to to Google that if you don't understand the play on words, younger people might not do. Um, but it's a nice touch. And it's um, a rule set designed specifically for the Wars of Roses period, which is my favourite period, so of course I'm going to have a crack at it. Uh, it's designed at big skirmishes and small battles in the period. Um, and it's free uh, with the current copy of War Games Illustrated, um, which most people will know what that is, but in case you don't, it's. Uh, a war game magazine available pretty much worldwide. Um, I'm one of their digital subscribers, so I get to download the PDF copy of it. And this currently comes free with the downloadable copy, and it's uh, physically free in the printed magazine too. Um, so I've printed and downloaded and printed my copy uh, yesterday, and I've had my first read through of it. Um, so. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite liking what I'm reading so far. I've not played it yet. I'm probably going to do that tomorrow. So, yep, a video will follow. I've got somebody, uh, looks like a member of my group, come around tomorrow to have a good game with me. So that should be a good laugh. But I just thought I'd chat through like what, what this is like uh, to begin with. Uh, there's a nice backstory to this. Um, in that copy of Wargames Illustrated, there's some um, designer's notes, uh, an article about how it came together. Uh, the, the rules are by a chap called Andy Callan. Um, I must confess I've, I've never met or, or come across actually, um, but uh, well, sort of my understanding of he's a long time gamer, I think he's somewhere from the Nottinghamshire area, um, he's been working on this for a while uh, and this has been in the pipeline with the people at WI for a while and um, there's a nice little backstory in the magazine about how he teamed up with WI and Dan Falkenbridge who's the editor um, and some of the other members of, of the uh, the team there and uh, sort of designed it, made it look nice and got it out there and did some playtesting, so it's been playtested to death as well. Um, so, having had a flip through it, it's only 20, you know, the main rule book is only uh, 20, 24 pages is like the main rule book. Um, it's nicely designed, nice little board around the edge. Um, I really like this and that they've done a 10 point summary of what the rules is about and what you need, what you don't need. Sort of key key thing straight away is you know it's it is that that sort of relatively modern large skirmish type sort of rule set and um, which I do like. Uh, it uses d6 dice, primarily designed at 28 millimeter figures, um, and just we'll go through some of the bits and pieces. But there's a nice little introduction and stuff like that. And you got your table of contents. You can see where WI have got involved in some really nice photography and stuff. Um, some lovely looking. Um, dioramas and stuff and, and scenes going on. Nice table of contents. Uh, little description of what is needed to play. Like I said, this is like a, it's a simple-ish set of rules, so there's no like, massively long preamble or there's no uh, real massive breakdown of what kind of terrain you need and all that sort of stuff. There's, there's a bit of army utilization. It's a points-based system, basically, where you, to, to, to create a sort of even game you you get 100 points each and you know your you, you, your troops are graded in terms of ability and, and unit type um, and you've got different movement criteria and all the, all the kind of stuff you'd come to expect from a normal sort of contemporary rule set um, you win by uh, either killing the commander-in-chief of the other person's army which obviously is one per army uh, or there's this interesting system using tokens, so each army gets a number of morale tokens as per its units and you can, or, or well certain actions I should say, certain certain things you do like routing or destroying units and things uh, mean that you take a morale token off your opponent and when your opponent has no more morale tokens to give you, you've won basically. I like the way that it says how the battle game is won. One player concedes, 
<laughs> we, we've all been there. It's nice to say that, you know, you don't have to play until uh, the bitter end if you don't want to. We all know that, but, you know, it's it's nice, nice that that's recognised. Um, there's troop qualities as well in here. I noticed they're bringing in that, which I quite like for this period because, you know, your average bowman wouldn't necessarily be a, an absolute ninja with a the bow. They might be sort of shy levies that are well practiced, but they're not necessarily as good as a full timer, all that sort of stuff, you know. Um, you've got a, a card system too in there. So um, during a turn, you'll, you'll draw cards where leaders are activated because they've got cards per each lever, uh, you know, around three to four leaders typically per army and they've got cards and they can order units that are in their ward or their, their bit of the army to do things and that's called a play deck and those cards um, go through nicely explained the issuing orders and how these order tokens work as well there's an order token system as well not just morales there's order tokens um, to donate when you're issuing orders and things a uh, nice little action list, movement and shooting is all kept to a couple of pages, which is good. One interesting thing I've noticed that they sort of point to is that, yes, archers are, or well-trained archers and bowmen are, are deadly and uh, can, can cause a lot of casualties at distance. They do run out of ammo um, and they are, they are limited to, to being able to create destruction at distance in a limited way, which in other rule sets I've noticed that they, they can basically, you can wipe out, you know, one part of an army with a couple of arrow storms, which could happen, I suppose, in real life in the period, but was relatively rare. Um, then you've got um, a few notes, there's like some nice notes or something that I always like as well, so you've got your shooting notes where they've got nice demonstrations of the stuff happening, with some nice pictures. Then you've got the melee section, and they talk about the melee section. Uh, they talk about in the notes, in particular, about that being the real point. You, you, how your leaders behave and command, and then how you get on in melee, being uh, the key thing that would decide a, a battle in the period. And so archery plays a big effect in it, but it, it is ultimately the the horrible rough and tumble and how troops react to that that decides the battle, which is you know by and large, uh, true to the time. Uh, again, because Malay is important, they've got a nice example of Malay in sequence and everything. It's a nice photo, that's nicely explained. It's a throw to hit and throw to save system with D6, which many people will be familiar with. Uh, morale, obviously, you know, taking a battering in a Malay results in a morale test. Uh, you can end up disarrayed, daunted, uh, so on and so forth. Think about winning the battle. Uh, and to finish off with, they've got a mustering the forces, which is some optional rules. So it goes on how you can choose an army. Um, and then this is just a crib sheet I've already printed off at the back. The other thing you get with it, we've spoken about the cards and the tokens. You get all that to print off. I've got to stick these on card, but here they're all here. So there's special event cards that come out of the deck while you're playing. Um, some nice back and then the leader cards as well. Um, come out the deck. Leaders are either, you know, one, two or three star level, so then your leaders get levels. One being not so good, three being the best. And they're also, interestingly, these are also wounds. So if they're in a melee, a leader could take up to three hits before they actually get wiped out. Uh, so yeah, you know, I, I think it, First thoughts then, it's, it's it's really nice and simple to understand, it's relatively short. Um, I'm no by no, no means a rules guru or expert and I got it pretty quick. Um, and I'll have a test of it tomorrow, see how we go. Um, something to point out as well is if you go on the War Games Illustrated website, um, there's a link there to a forum they've set up, there's a group on Facebook which I've just joined myself. Um, which will be really helpful. I understand there's a couple of videos coming up involving the author. Um, talking through the rules and so on and so forth. Looking forward to that. Um, and yeah, uh, Christmas has come early <laughs> for, um, for us Wars of the Roses uh, fanatics. So yeah, very pleased with that because there's not many rule sets specifically about the period. There's lots of rule sets that cover medieval battles. But I think the thing about um, 
roses is basically um, it's towards the end of the medieval period. So you've got artillery, um, you've got uh, well-paid and well-trained troops in this period and stuff. Probably better so than say the 13th century. Um, tactics are changing a bit now with pike and stuff like that. Um, and all of that is reflected here, including the aforementioned artillery and, and so on and so forth. All the troop types are well, uh, well represented in here. Plus, the you know there are things that can happen as far as I can see where you know you could end up with unit routing, and then that leads to another unit routing. Looks like they've built things in to stop your army from just walking off after one one defeat um, all the time. Um, but you know some of the problems that commanders had at the time, they've thought about that, and that's in, clearly in there just from a first read through. So. Uh, yeah, I'm impressed by that, and uh, it looks really nice as well. It's nicely laid out, thanks to WI and stuff. Um, so yeah, looking forward to getting stuck into that tomorrow. Um, so video coming up in the next few days, so showing you how that game got. Last thing to mention, um, I am going to do a Wargaming Rules for Dummies video fairly soon in the next couple of weeks, talking through the different sort of levels of rule set you can get. Um, which will be about all kinds of rule sets, not just medieval. Um, and just what I've learned over the last couple of years from doing stuff like this and playing around with rule sets and stuff, which I think would be helpful to people who are beginners um, who are trying to choose or get their head around rule sets. So that's coming up. As always, do us a favour, um, give us a like and subscribe. I'd appreciate that if you can, if you haven't done so already. Massive thanks to anybody who's already subbed um, and watching the stuff. And uh, see you again next time. Bye for now.